So in this video, we're going to talk about the integration by parts. Uh, this is going to be maybe a series. I don't know. Um, I just know that for this video, we're going to give you the basic idea and some basic functions. And then in the second video or, or even the third, we're going to go in more depth in depth about some harder functions. Okay. And so the idea is given by, you know, if we have some sort of off, you know, integral in, in this order where they're, they're being multiplied, um, we treat one as a derivative and we treat one as a regular function. Okay. And we follow this pattern, okay? Okay, and we're gonna talk about what this means when we're doing some problems. So um, this is the general notation I'm used to, um, simply because f of x, g of x makes sense. I've been doing this since college algebra, you know, intermediate algebra, you know, algebra two, this is from high school essentially. So this make this now makes sense to me. U, V stuff, again, if your teacher teaches it like that, no problem. Uh, it's, it's, um, I just tend not to, to like that, <laughs> um, but, but it's all preference. It, it will make sense. We should get the same answer in the end. Okay. And so what if you're given a function like this X e to the X DX, and I wanted to take the integral of this. Well, notice I can't use u substitution. Okay. And so the idea is that we've got to use integration by parts. Now the always tricky question is which one do you choose to be f of x and which one do you choose to be g of x? Well, typically I choose g of x as to be the one that when I take my derivative that will give me a very simple, very simple you know answer or you know number that I could just multiply by. If it's a constant, then I'm always going to do that. Okay, and so well if I treat one as my derivative uh, as my uh, derivative, well f prime of x. Well, in this case, I'm going to choose it to be e to the x. Now, f of x is, is just the antiderivative of whatever you chose to be your, your derivative. And so, antiderivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Uh, or g of x now will be x. And so, when I take my derivative of x, I get 1. So, notice the simplicity here. And this will, this will make my life much more simple. And so... We know the integral of x e to the x dx. Well, that's simply equal to what's my formula? f of x times g of x. So this is x e to the x. Okay. I'm going to subtract that from my integral of f of x, which is e to the x times g of g prime of x, which happens to be 1 dx. And so when I do that, I could definitely see that my integral is e to the x minus e to the x uh, plus c. <laughs> I did write a dx right there. So that's a plus c. Okay. So again, uh, notice that the integral of e to the x is just e to the x. Okay. So let's look at another one. What if I wanted to take the integral of x sine of x dx? Okay. Well, again, in this case, what would I choose to be my f prime of x? Well, again, if I choose sine of x to be my derivative, notice that when I take, when I, if I choose x to be g prime of x, notice that when I take the derivative, I get one. Well, I will always love that. And so f prime of x in this case will be sine of x. Well, what's the, the integral of sine of x? That happens to be negative cosine of x. Yeah. So g of x is what? x. We said that'd be x. Okay. And so g prime of x will happen to be one. So in this case, we know the integral of x sine of x dx. Well, that is just equal to f of x times g of x. So this is negative x cosine of x. Okay. And we're going to minus that from the integral of f of x times g prime of x. So that happens to be negative cosine of x times 1 dx. Okay, so we know the integral is given by negative x cosine of x. Well, I could just add, I could just bring this negative out to give me a positive integral of cosine of x dx. And then when I do that, my integral is negative x cosine of x plus what's, what's my integral of cosine of x? That happens to be sine of x plus c. Okay, so kind of kind of notice the pattern here, okay? Now, what about this one? What if I wanted to take the integral of x ln of the absolute value of x dx? Okay. Well, in this case, you've got to be very careful. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, 
in the last case, we, we chose g, g of x to be x, and we said, okay, well, the derivative of that is 1. But in this case, we got to be very careful, okay? And so in this case, we actually have to choose f prime of x to be x, okay? And so what's the antiderivative of x? Well, that's just 1 half x squared. g of x, in this case, will be ln of, ln of absolute value of x. And so the derivative of that will happen to be 1 over x. Okay. So we know that the integral now of x, ln of the absolute value of x, dx, well, that happens to be the formula which says that we're going to take uh, f of x times g of x. So this is 1 half x squared ln of x. Okay, and we're going to subtract that from the integral of f of x times f prime of x. So when I look at this, I have one half, I have one half x squared multiplied by one over x dx. Okay, and so when I look at this, I know my integral is only be given by one half x squared ln of x or ln of absolute value of x. And because one half is a constant, I could factor it out. So this becomes x squared over x dx. Hopefully by now we can see that this simplifies. So this becomes the integral of one half x squared ln of the absolute value of x minus one half times the integral of, so I still have x times the integral of x dx. Okay, and running out of space here. Uh, so my integral complete will be given by 1 half x squared ln of the absolute value of x. Minus, well, what's the integral of um, uh, x? That happens to be x squared. So this is 1 half uh, x squared divided by 2 plus c. And again, you can see that this these will multiply to give me 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth x squared plus c. Okay. I'm um, running out of space here, so that's why I didn't write that part, but hopefully you see what, I, what I'm saying there. Okay, so that's the general idea. So let's look at another one. So what if I ask you to take the integral of natural log of the absolute value of x? Okay, what would you do? Well, with this, you, you got to be very careful. We got to treat, we got to treat this. This is a special case, so we've got to treat this integral as 1 times ln of the absolute value of x dx, okay? And so in this case, you can definitely see that if I choose f of x, my f prime of x has to be 1. And, and the reason, yeah, f prime of x has to be 1, and so the antiderivative of 1 is just x. We know g of x has to be natural log of x, the absolute value of x. And we know the derivative of that has to be 1 over x. Okay, so notice the difference here. If I had done it the other way, I would get to a point where I would end up with the antiderivative of ln of x, and we actually don't know that. We know the derivative. Okay, and so we know that the derivative of ln of x, ln of absolute value of x dx, you know, that happens to be, uh, this happens to be the formula which says I'm going to take f of x times g of x. This is x ln of the absolute value of x minus the integral of f of x times g prime of x. So this is 1 over x dx. Okay. So in this case, I know my integral is given by x ln of the absolute value of x minus the integral of x over x dx. And we know the integral now is given by x ln of the absolute value of x minus the integral of 1 dx okay so hopefully we can see that integral is given by x absolute value of x minus x plus c so so that is my integral um let me see if i have any more problems here uh, for the more simple problems uh, what about this one what about tangent inverse tangent inverse of x dx Okay, well, for this one, again, just like ln of x, we got to treat it like that. So this is actually integral of 1 times tangent inverse, tangent inverse of x dx, okay? 
Now in this case, what I'm going to choose is the, the idea is going to be the same thing. So my f of x, f prime of x actually, will be 1. We know the antiderivative of that will be x. Uh, g of x in this case will be tangent inverse of x. And we know the derivative of tangent inverse of x. That's just 1 over x squared. 1 over uh, 1 over 1 plus x squared or x squared plus 1 okay so so we know that we know we know that derivative okay and so uh, how would we how would we integrate it how would we integrate it so if I'm looking at this uh, 1 plus x squared, uh, 1 plus x squared, x squared plus 1. Let's do 1 plus x squared. I don't know. <laughs> 1 plus x squared, okay? So, so that's the integral of tangent, okay? And so if I'm looking at this, well, we want to go of tangent inverse of x dx. That happens to be f of x times g of x. So this is x tangent inverse of x minus the integral of f of x times g prime of x. So this becomes x multiply by 1 over 1 plus x squared dx okay so if i look at this this becomes the integral now becomes x tangent inverse of x minus the integral of x over 1 plus x squared dx okay to me now this looks like a u substitution okay this looks like a u substitution so if i set u to be 1 plus x squared, and then my du is 2x dx. And so now I have 1 half du, which will be x dx. Okay. And so if I look at this, my integral now is given by x tangent inverse of x minus 1 half times the integral of 1 over u. Yeah. Du. Okay, so again, my one half du replaces my x dx, and I set this to be u. I set all this to be u. Okay. So when I look at this, my integral now is going to be given by x tangent inverse of x minus one half times the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Okay, and so I know the integral in this case will be given by x tangent inverse of x minus one half times the natural log of what was my u one plus x squared plus c so that will be my integral so again these are the basic functions some basic functions that uh we need to know um and then the second video i'm going to post is going to go in depth about harder functions but this video you need to get the general gist of what's going on before we can even go into harder functions